Are you looking for a delicious way to start your day with something that is packed with flavor? Well, I have the perfect solution for you here. These are Pound Dropper's Lightened Up Morning Glory Muffins. I make a few tweaks to the recipe, but you don't have to. They are delicious no matter what. So if you'd like to see how these are done, stick around because it's coming up next. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name's Roy. I'm a home cook and amateur baker, and I'm here on this channel sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Now, as you may have seen in the description, shocker, this one is not mine. This is a recipe from Pound Dropper, and I've made these before because Paul really enjoys morning glory muffins. So I tried to find a recipe that would work and Pound Droppers lightened up. Morning Glory muffins certainly fit the bill, but I do make a couple of small changes to mine, but I'll go over that as we move along. Well, I'm ready to start baking, so let's go over the ingredients. I have here some baking spray in the recipe. She says cooking spray, either one will do. And I have my 12 cup muffin tin over here. So this is going to be making 12 muffins. I have here two cups of flour and that's just regular all-purpose flour. Here I have three eggs and those are at room temperature as I always say whenever you're baking specifically you always want your ingredients at room temperature so they combine more easily. I have here two cups of shredded carrot and in her recipe she does say about four large carrots Mine were about six medium carrots. Here I have one Granny Smith apple that's been shredded and you can see it's starting to oxidize. I did add a little lemon juice knowing I was prepping this for this video and would have to have it setting out for a little bit, but that's not gonna bother anything if it gets a little oxidation, meaning it's getting a little too much air and the color is turning brown. These are gonna be baked into our muffin, so it's not gonna make that big of a difference. I have here three quarters of a cup of brown sugar replacement. I am using the So Nourished brown sugar replacement. I've also used the Bestie brown sugar, and that is also good, no aftertaste from either of those. Here I have two thirds cup of applesauce. Again, that's at room temperature. I store mine in the fridge once I've opened it, so I do need it to come to room temperature. I have here one quarter cup of raisins. Now this is where I'm gonna make one of the changes to her recipe. You can follow her recipe as she says it, but I do not like raisins baked into things that are plump. The texture just does not sit well with me. What Pound Dropper has you do is soak those in hot water for about 10 minutes to let them plump up. I am not doing that because I don't like that texture. I don't mind the chewy texture here, but I'm not a fan of that plumped up texture. So I am skipping that step but it will be in her recipe and I'm gonna be linking directly to her recipe down in the description box. I have here one quarter cup of walnuts. I'm going to chop them a little more than they are now, but another change I'm making is I'm going to toast those first because toasting your nuts definitely brings out their flavor and enhances that flavor. So I'm gonna be toasting that just to nudge up that walnut flavor a little bit. I have here one quarter cup of unsweetened shredded coconut, and I'm gonna do the same thing with that. I'm gonna toast them just slightly. Once the nuts are out of the pan, I'm going to throw the coconut in there, but I'll be showing you that step anyway, so you know how to do it if you want to but you don't have to toast either one of those. Here I have two tablespoons of quick cooking oats. Now in her recipe, Pound Dropper uses wheat germ. I don't really use wheat germ that often, so I don't wanna buy a container and have it sitting there. So I swap that out for some rolled oats, quick cooking so that they don't hold on to an oat texture in here, but it will definitely give it a little more substance as would the wheat germ. But if you wanna buy wheat germ, if you have wheat germ, go right ahead and use that. Here I have one tablespoon of fresh orange juice. I'm assuming you could use bottled orange juice. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I decided that I would use fresh 
just because I want to also use, which is not in her recipe, roughly one teaspoon of orange zest. Now that is not in her recipe, but I wanted to bump up that orange flavor. And you get a lot of flavor from the oils in the skin of the orange. So that's why zesting is great. Just make sure you don't go past the orange part into the white. That is called the pith. And that is very bitter. You don't want to taste that in your cooking if you can help it. But that was about half of an orange and that's where I got the juice from. The other half is in the fridge for a snack later. Here I have one teaspoon of vanilla extract and you could play around with the extract flavor, but the vanilla is typical of a morning glory muffin. I have here two teaspoons of ground cinnamon one teaspoon of ground ginger, one teaspoon of baking soda, not baking powder, baking soda, and one quarter teaspoon of salt. So those are all of the ingredients we have. I'm going to spray my muffin tin, shuffle a few things around, and we're gonna get started. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is toast my walnuts. I wanna toast them now before I mix everything together so that way they have a little time to cool off before I add them in. So I have a pan sitting over here, heating up over medium heat. I'm gonna add in the walnuts. I'm gonna shake that a little bit just to spread them out evenly. And I'm going to toast them, stirring on occasion for just about five minutes. You will start to smell the difference and smell the fragrance of the walnuts when they are ready. And you do wanna stir them on occasion because you don't want one part to be sitting on the heat for too long. That part will scorch. So you wanna stir it on occasion just to get those activated, get that flavor going. So give me a few minutes and we'll move on. All right, so it's been about five minutes and they're not overly dark. You may not say too big of a change, but what it's done is it's drawn out the oils. It's going to enhance that nutty flavor and also the texture. So I'm going to take these now and put them onto a cutting board. And I also wanted to mention, I did not put anything in there. I didn't spray the pan. This is dry roasting. You don't want to put any sort of liquid in there with them. So now that that's out, I'm going to add the coconut. And I just want to get a very faint color on here just to enhance the flavor again. So that's going to take a minute or two. So while that's happening, I'm going to chop up my nuts. Now, the reason I didn't chop them before adding them to the pan is because I didn't want them too small because that would increase the chance that they might burn. So then I'll just chop these up and get them smaller pieces so that they spread more evenly because we're not using a lot. We have a better chance of getting that flavor spread throughout all of the muffins than getting one big chunk every now and then. And I'm smelling the coconut. That's got a little light browning on it and that's all I want just to enhance that flavor. So you can see little bits of toasting in there. That's all I really want from that is just to get a smidge of color and enhance that flavor, get those oils going. So let me transfer these back to their bowls and then we'll move on. All right, so now I have a large bowl. To that bowl, I'm going to mix up my dry ingredients. Oh, and one thing I did want to mention, again, the pan was dry when I put the coconut in, but it also only took about a minute or two for it to get colored. You definitely smell the coconut starting to waft from the pan, and that's when you want to stop. So now to a large bowl, I'm going to add in the flour, brown sugar sweetener, cinnamon, ginger, baking soda, and salt. And then I'm just going to break up that brown sugar and whisk all of this together so that we get a pretty even spread of all of these ingredients and there are no big clumps of brown sugar. You may have to go in there with your hands and break some of the larger clumps up because just like regular brown sugar, there's more moisture in this than there is in a granulated sugar. So you do want to break up any clumps because you don't want to bite into a muffin and have a big shock of sweetness. All right, so that looks pretty good. It's a homogenous beige color. So now what I'm going to do is switch over to my spatula. And now we're going to add in the filler ingredients. Now here is where I'm making one of the changes because I did not hydrate 
the raisins. She has you add those after you've added the wet mixture because she doesn't want the wet raisins soaking up flour and attaching flour to themselves. Since I didn't soak mine, I'm just throwing them in now. But if you were to soak yours, you would put them in after you had mixed the batter all together. But for now, I'm going to put in our carrots. And I grated these on the larger holes, not the really small holes, the small holes will release a lot more moisture. And we don't really want that since extra moisture could make these gummy. The apple, the raisins, the oats, or wheat germ if you're using that, the walnuts, and the coconut. And then we're just going to toss this all together to get that flour and brown sugar incorporated with all of these other ingredients. And because the apple is wet, you may notice that you need to break it up a little bit as you are going along and just get that coated with some of the flour. So just toss that just to get things coated and spread throughout. And again, as I said, break up any bits of apple or carrot that you happen to see clumping up. Okay, now I'm just gonna set that aside and bring in, I'm just using a large measuring cup. You could use another bowl if you want, but I think this is sufficient for me. So we're gonna add in our eggs and I like to break those up a little bit before I add the other ingredients the applesauce, the orange juice, the vanilla, and the zest. I am adding the zest in with the liquid because that way the oils will spread throughout a little bit more and I can definitely get a smell of that orange. So I'm just gonna whisk this up to make sure that it is thoroughly combined. And it may not look like a lot of liquid, but that is because the apple and the carrots are gonna give off some moisture. So you don't want too much moisture in these muffins. Okay, so that looks pretty good, pretty well homogenized. So now I'm going to bring my bowl back in and just add the wet into the dry. And you wanna stir these just until everything is combined. You don't wanna overwork this because that will develop gluten, which is great if you're making a bread or a roll, but not so much when you are making a muffin. You want a tender muffin. And if you mix too much and overwork the flour, you're gonna get a tough muffin. Okay, so that's just combined and we're gonna stop there. And now we're gonna bring in our muffin tin. And she says to measure in about a third cup of the batter, but I like using the scoops. And this is a number 14 scoop, which is about a quarter cup. So I like to stir it with the quarter cup and then I can evenly disperse any remaining afterwards. I don't wanna to have to go back and pick stuff out of previous ones because I don't have enough batter at the end. Just going to scoop and I press up against the side just so I get a consistent measure and just plop that in. Okay, so I've got all of my muffin tins filled and there's a little bit of batter left. So I'm just gonna put little dollops onto each one and get this all used up. Okay, so the batter is all used up and I'm just going to clean up the edges of the pan a little bit so that these little pieces that are on the outside do not burn. Okay, so now these are going into a 375 degree oven. I've had my oven preheating these are gonna go in for about 25 to 28 minutes until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean, and then we will have some delicious muffins ready for us. So give me 25, 30 minutes, and I'll be back. Okay, there we have them. Pound Droppers lightened up morning glory muffins, looking amazing and smelling delicious. Now you have to let these rest in the pan just about five minutes before you take them out. And you can have them warm, you can have them cool, you can have them at room temperature, you can have them any way you enjoy them. Paul really likes his muffins when they're grilled. You cut it in half through the top and grill it with a little bit of butter. That's his favorite way of having them. Now, Pound Dropper says that you can store them at room temperature wrapped in plastic for up to two days, in the refrigerator up to five, or in the freezer for up to three months. I usually have them on the counter three or four days and I haven't had any issue. But if you feel more comfortable, you go with Pound Dropper's recommendations. But that's all there is to it and they are so good. I can't wait to dig into some. 
We may not wait until they're fully cooled. Now for the bites, points, calories, and macros, I'm going to give you what I got using what I have. The bites and points aren't going to change from what Pound Dropper had. The calories and macros may just slightly because I didn't really add anything too extreme. I swapped out the wheat germ for the quick oats. That might make a small difference, but overall, it's gonna be roughly the same. So for one muffin, it is going to be three Better Balance Bites or Old Blue Points. It may be the same on the current plan. I know there's a little fluctuation there somewhere, but I'm not exactly sure where. And if you had two of these, it would be seven. So still not too bad, but they are so tasty, you're really gonna enjoy these. Now, if you are following calories, the calories for one of these is going to be 163. And if you are following macros, the fat would be 4.1 grams. The saturated fat would be 1.4 grams. The protein would be 4.8 grams. And you could change that slightly if you swapped out a little bit of the flour for some protein powder. The carbs are 39.1 grams. The fat is 2.6 grams. And the sugars are 6.5 grams for one of these muffins. But I hope you're gonna give these a try. Pound Dropper has a lot of great recipes. I know I've done others of hers on this channel. I really need to do more because she does have some great recipes. Now, if you enjoyed this video and this recipe, I would appreciate you supporting my channel by doing the usual, like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that notification bell for the next time I upload any sort of video. And if you'd like to enjoy these, I will link directly to Pound Dropper's site down below so you can get that. I will also list the small changes that I've made so that you can make the same if you'd prefer. You, you can do it just as Pound Dropper did it and they'll still be delicious. I just like to bump it up a little bit. Also down there, you will find links to my Amazon storefront as well as my social media. I have my Instagram and three Facebook groups that I'm part of. So go check out that description box for all sorts of information. All right, so before I let you go, it's been about five minutes. I'm gonna turn these out so you can see what they look like. And to make it easier on myself, I'm gonna take the cooling rack, put it on top and just flip them this way. Cause if I try to flip them out, they're all gonna go all over the place. And they all came out beautifully. Now I just gotta flip them over and they're gonna cool. Although we may not be able to wait, but I hope you're gonna give these a try yourself very soon. Thank you to Pound Dropper for coming up with a great recipe. And until next time, bye.